my arm is killing me. It's got nothing to do with the cuffs on my wrists and more to do with the swelled mass on my upper arm. It's an abscess. The medical definition is a localized collection of bacterial pus. It's formed by tissue disintegration, thus creating an inflamed area causing acute, severe pain. It's no coincidence that uh, I have this infection in my body and that I'm in jail. These are both direct results of sticking a needle into my arm on a daily basis. Here's what I've been doing. It's called skin popping or intramuscular using. It's, it's when you have a hard time finding a proper vein in your reckless state of drug abuse that um, well, it's, I've been doing this for a while now. And I'm just not myself anymore. When I'm filled with so much desperation to get away from withdrawal, you end up just plunging a needle into the fleshiest part of your body for this quick, this cheap salvation. But to have this thing on my arm and go to jail, this is like having a giant zit on prom night. <laughs> I can actually feel this alien. It's swelling in my bicep. It's pulsing. It's throbbing. The heat that it's emitting, it's like there's a hot plate plugged right into my arm. This is a real horror show, and it's about to premiere in the worst of all theaters. I'm sitting on a, on a bench in a cell not much bigger than a, de than a department store dressing room. The whole place echoes with the shouts of deputies and inmates. Turn down the air conditioning. The air conditioning never stops in here. It pumps this cold air. It's for sanitary reasons, but that doesn't keep away the smell of feet and man's ass. The pain, the pain in my arm, it's, it's only displaced slightly when I give the softball size invasion a caress. I give my arm another slight squeeze just to shift the discomfort, and then it happens. A rupture on the abscess creates a fissure across the surface. It's, it's like an animated illustration of an earthquake. Then the abomination opens up and starts to erupt. The cartoon sound of a pop <laughs> launches a thick river of yellow, green bile a good three feet away. It splatters on a mirror. I gotta say though, the relief that I'm feeling, it's nice. It's comforting like a giant tumor removed. It feels good. Like giving birth to an unwanted pregnancy, I imagine. <laughs> the, the very next sensation, the next sensation I get is a smell. No, this is a stench. Raw hamburger bleached in a desert sun. Now, the thought of anyone else watching this repulses me almost as much as to what's happening to me right now. So while I'm trying to stop the hemorrhaging with some sandpaper-grade toilet paper, a deputy with a 1990s goatee busts through the door. What the fuck? <laughs> he calls in some other deputies to witness my condition. And now, and now, the first thorns of withdrawal start to prick me. The withdrawal, the withdrawal is like the worst flu and a nonstop anxiety attack all rolled into one. And this is why I go to such great lengths to keep using that needle. It's all to avoid what's happening right now. We're all going to be here for a while now. Me, my abscess, and my withdrawal. I accept this, because if I don't, if I don't, I'm only going to become more of what ails me now. Now, the beds here, the beds here are three to a bunk and have all the support and ergonomics of like a bag of potato chips. <laughs> so naturally, most people, most people hate it here and to pass the time, they sleep. They all sleep for escape. It, it's like a giant slumber party in here. But not me. No, I can't. I can't sleep. It's impossible. Eating is just asking for trouble as well. I barely drink water. What goes in must come out. 
the sleeve of my t-shirt, it's stained from the drainage of fluids and blood. It looks like a Japanese flag against the porous white cotton. I hide it. I gotta. I hide it at all costs because, because this place is just like junior high school. All we need is a reason to pick you apart. Up until lights out, the Mexicans across from me, they all sing in harmony. I love to listen to this. Their songs, they take me away. The, the upbeat tone of the words, the words I don't even understand, they only sound really, really happy to me and have not been truly happy for a while now. I, I wish that I had anywhere to call home when, I, when they do let me out. I think a lot about the hours that have passed since the last time I put that, I put that wretched needle in my body. I think about an apartment I had in New York that had a roof that overlooked other roofs. I think back to when I had friends. Somewhere around 3 in the morning, an air horn goes off unapologetically. There's an army of deputies dressed in riot gear. Dressed in riot gear. Every one of them is screaming like a bunch of guys on spring break. Get the fuck up! This is a contraband search. Get up and get undressed, gentlemen. I don't have an issue with being naked in front of others, but again, it's the abscess on my arm that screams for all this negative attention. I get a deputy in a helmet screaming in my face to hurry up and strip and join the rest of the naked felons in the bright, sick glow of fluorescent light. Yo, man, what the fuck happened to your arm, bro? Now, my secret is out for everyone to see. Another dirty look every five feet as I walk sleepless and naked to the sea of taunts. He probably got AIDS, yo. I wish. It looks like you got shot, bro. Yeah, I wish. At least then I'd have a cool reason for this hole in my arm. I'm facing a cold concrete wall. I'm sweating and I'm trying to keep from crying, really. When I cannot help, I can't help but notice to my right, the guy next to me, the guy next to me has by far the smallest penis I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's like a newborn baby, the way this guy is hung. <laughs> it's like a mole surrounded by pubic hair. <laughs> Suddenly, I, I can't stop grinning. And it's because this guy's tiny dick is making me feel better about myself. <laughs> better for not being the only guy trying to hide his dirty little secret in here. For the next few moments, I am. I am not the only spectacle. He is a sight for my sore ego. I smile at him, but only with empathy. Thanks, baby cock. Thanks. <laughs> Seventy-two hours later, I'm lying on the top of the three-story bunk again. I spend all my time up here squirming. I still haven't eaten anything, but that doesn't stop my stomach from churning. I cannot sit here another second. I start to climb down. Actually, I jump so I can make it to the toilet in time. But I don't. I don't make it on time. I am now throwing up. It's projectile sick. Again, and some more. I heave. That's all of it, I think. Now, there is a top ten list somewhere. A top ten list of things that will get your ass kicked in jail. Somewhere between eating a guy's sandwich and pissing on somebody in the shower lies a violation of puking on somebody's bed. I hear a chorus of, Kick his ass! Kick his ass! Now, I haven't been in a real fight since I was in first grade, and I busted some kid's lip with my windbreaker. <laughs> this is not first grade. This is a time to just take my beating. In my condition, it's, it's really for the best. I tense up. The shirtless guy comes up to me. He's built like an agile flyweight boxer. He puts his finger in my chest. 
Why the hell did you do that to my bunk? I search for words, but I can't find any. He leans in closer. Why'd you throw up on my goddamn bed? I try to answer. I try to answer the question, why this happened? Why I threw up on this menacing-looking guy's bunk? My fingers are fluttering. My, my, my toes are, 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 are crunched. I have, like, zero confidence. I start to mumble. I don't have a good reason. It's just what happens every time I go to jail. I get sick. <laughs> every time. I begin to anticipate being railed to the face. Through one clenched eye, I can see he gives me a look that is absolutely unmistakable. It is a look of mercy. The crowd, they're all ready for a public thrashing. He just shakes his head. He does something I've never seen done in here. The same guy whose bed I just threw up on, he grabs a mop and a bucket, and he proceeds to clean up whatever was lying in my stomach just a few minutes earlier. I'm as confused as the next guy why this is happening. But it is. So I just grab a towel and I rush in to clean up the rest. I'm sorry. I won't let this happen again, man. The crowd walks away. He leans in and he whispers to me now that he's been locked up since last year and that he was in the same strung-out drug addict shape that I'm in now. Well, not as torp as you, he laughs. <laughs> but I wasn't myself either. I felt, I felt like I found a, a box of money. All was not completely lost. Later on, 48 days to be exact, I'm released from jail. I'm getting dressed. I'm getting dressed back into the clothes I was arrested in. And they don't fit me anymore. And neither does the idea of putting another needle into my body. On every hypodermic needle made in the United States, and I must have seen this like a thousand times, there's a warning printed on the side. Obviously, it's for sanitary reasons, but it says, use once and destroy. Use once and destroy. Now I get it. Now I get it. For me, that's one of the best things. That's probably one of the best things that's ever been written, ever. The abscess is nearly just a scar now, and now I have nothing left to hide.